Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. In this episode, we're going to take a look at something actually fundamental for what regards vinyl playback. Something that has always been there, practically, I would say almost since the beginning, all the way up to now. What am I talking about? The RIAA equalization. What is that? Let's take a look. Go. Okay, guys. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at something that most of you, most of you nerds, most of you knowledge people about vinyl already know, obviously. But a lot of people don't. So I think it's very interesting and cool to know what is the RIAA equalization, also known as, as we call it in Italy, the RIA equalization. Um, and this also came to my mind, actually, because of the last video we did on noise reduction systems. Remember that? Here's the link. Yes, because actually this type of equalization is, we could consider it almost as a handmade mechanical acoustic, actually acoustic is the right term probably, a noise reduction system. But not only, we'll get to it. Okay, so what happened very briefly? Uh, in around the 50s, and actually we could say in 1954, the Recording Industry Association of America, the RIAA, decided to fix an equalization curve for long-playing vinyl records, for long-playing uh, albums. Because, as you know, uh, I think you know, well, at least I also did a video on 78 records. Before that specific moment, there were a lot, there were several uh, dozens, I would say, types of equalization. Actually, every company almost had one. In fact, I illustrated this re-equalizer by RecoCut, which is very cool, that you can change the, uh, they call it turnover and roll-off, which are just terms for the lower and higher frequencies. You can bypass it. And it's very cool because with this, you practically have any kind of equalization that uh, is required, especially with pre-RIAAA um, curve. That's what you need, especially with 78 records, obviously. But we're wanna, we, we want to focus on this second part, this subsequent phase. And it is very important because without this type of equalization, we would not have our record vinyls the way we know them. So let's get a little bit more technical, but not too much. What is the RIAA equalization? Well, it's practically, we could call it a pre-emphasis and de-emphasis solution in order to achieve two main factors with our vinyl records. First, reduce noise. Yes, we will see then why. And also enlarge, increase the amount of space on the vinyl records. Well, obviously we could add also a standardized form. So that what that's obvious, obviously the first reason why they decided to do that. So all around the world, slowly everyone adopted that equalization curve and is still used today. So what is happening on our vinyl records? Well, um, with the RIAA curve, we have a minus 20 dB decrease in the lower frequencies. And in, in, in the, at the same time, a plus 20 dB increase in the treble. So, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's typical. We have this type of curve like this, where we are lowering the bass and hiring the treble. Very simple, like that. And that's what happened while you're cutting the, your lacquer, while you're adding the music on the lacquer. You're not recording it that way, but you're cutting it that way. 
Why is that? Because, as I said, first of all, in that way, you are reducing that noise that was contained in the, uh, in the lower frequencies. And at the same time, you're also boosting the treble, which obviously at that point, during playback, we have the second phase with a de-emphasize. And at that point, just like as we saw in the noise reduction systems, th that noise was is, is boosted away and reduced now again back to minus 20 dB. So let's take a let's take a look at this picture here. As we can see, we have the recording, actually the cutting, we could say, of the lathe, where we have this equalization. And at the same time, you can also see the playback equalization and if you sum and subtract them at the same time you will have a perfectly flat response that is the genius beh behind this idea because as i said you're reducing the noise at the same time and you're gaining a huge amount of space actually around more more or less even a little more than 20 minutes which is a lot guys 20 minutes per side wow why is that because the lower frequencies require huge grooves huge wiggles uh, for a, a very deep low bass note you need a lot of space and every time you're going to put that especially in rock records you're going to practically use up all the space with those low frequencies instead if you de-emphasize them you put them away they're still there but they're lowered greatly lowered the volume is greatly lowered and uh when the in, instead when we go back to playback those are increased again by 20 db and the same although in the opposite way is done with treble very very cool and this is something uh, that you cannot do usually, especially now, with your amplifiers. That is why it's fundamental to have a pre-phono, pre-phono pre amplifier, a pre-amplifier, or a phono stage, as we can call it in other languages and cultures. So the role of a phono pre-amplifier is that, first of all, as you can imagine, to slightly increase to give gain to that very subtle and weak signal coming from your turntable from the cartridge okay that's already very important and, and, and you, you, that's why you require high quality components and circuits but not only you also have to apply this curve this equalization and that is why it's fundamental to have something as a phono preamplifier and it's and this curve, this equalization, is not just a normal low-pass filter. It is actually mm, defined by three time constants, so you know exactly how this is supposed to be reproduced. We have one for the treble, which is 75 microseconds, one for the mid frequencies, which is 318 microseconds, and one for the low end, for the bass. 3,180 microseconds, which correspond to, I have to read this, 2,122 hertz for the highs, 500 hertz for the mids, and 50 hertz for the lows. They tried to introduce a four-time uh, uh, control um, in this equalization in 76, the so-called RIAA slash IEC, the RIA EHC, as we say it in Italy, uh, but unfortunately it did not take place. They want to introduce another one for the very, very low end um, notes, which does make sense, but unfortunately it's too late. I mean, we have this equalization. It's on all records starting from 54, probably even earlier, not, not as standardized as from that date on. And still today, we're using that because it's a great solution to have a diminishing of, as I said, the noise, an increase in space, and actually you can have a better signal-to-noise ratio as noise reduction systems with this little technique. Otherwise, the records would be much more noisier. It's a fantastic solution, and I hope you enjoy this video and you like what, what you're listening and hearing from these videos if you do please remember to subscribe guys and what can i say happy holidays
Bye, guys. Oh, I forgot. And remember, music is born analog. Ciao. Well, guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.